Ladies and gentlemen, in the house, Rex Havens. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. And let me say from the heart, thank you for what you do. Because what all you fine people do makes the world go round. You work hard with your brains and your sweat. You go to work every day. Your families and your communities are better off for what you do because what you do is important. And that is where you and I differ. <laughs> Because I'm a comedian, and it is one of the dumbest wastes of human energy ever invented. <laughs> I don't have to kid myself about that. We don't do anything terribly valuable like you do. We stare at the world, and we try to figure out things which, I'm going to be honest with you, we're never going to figure out. Things we say I don't understand. Spit an image. Where'd that come from? <laughs> spit an image. Look at him there, Jim. He's the spit an image of him there. Did anybody ever walk up to somebody and say, you know, you look a lot like Bob? I don't think they should be allowed to call that show Survivor unless some of them don't. <laughs> Am I the only person that's nervous checking into a hospital with the word memorial in the name? <laughs> Can't figure out anything. Can't figure out the names of the cars. There's a lot of cars that don't even have a name. They have a number. Why is that? It only makes sense if you're trying to get the biggest number. I'll give you an example. Mazda's got a 323, 626, 929. Pontiac had a 1,000. Audi has a 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Pontiac had a 6,000. Saab has a 9,000. Nissan just said to heck with it. Now they make an infinity. <laughs> Top that. Chrysler, Mitsubishi's a little nuts. They got a vision, an eclipse, and a mirage. A vision, which is really something to look at. An eclipse, that's something you're not supposed to look at. A mirage, something you're not even really looking at. <laughs> and they got cars named for the heart of the big city all the way on out to the sticks. For the inner city, metro. A little further out, suburban. <laughs> further out still, town car. Got one that can't decide, town and country. <laughs> further out still, villager. Beyond civilization, the Yukon and the Outback. <laughs> and way the heck out there, Mercury and Saturn. <laughs> All those things we can't figure out. I always wonder, can the cars do what their names sound like they can do? And if they can, then apparently they can do a wide range of things. Get one that does what you need doing. If you're going someplace and there are no roads, get a Pathfinder or a Trailblazer. <laughs> if nobody's ever been where you're going, you're going to need a Discovery or an Explorer. <laughs> if you're a little bit lonely, I say get yourself an Escort. Or maybe an amigo or a sidekick, you know, shop around, <laughs> shop around, shop around a little bit, you know. Plymouth made a Reliant. I had one. They call it that because it made you reliant on public transportation, by God. <laughs> get the car based on the kind of trip you want to take. If you want to take a short trip, get a sprint. Slightly longer trip, get a journey. Want to take a hopeful trip, get a quest. A long, hard trip, get an expedition or an excursion. And if you want to stay away for years, get an odyssey. <laughs> but get the car that fits your mood. If you want to be daring, get an intrepid. If you want to be a gentleman, get a gallant. If you want to go overseas, get a passport. If you can't concentrate, get a focus. <laughs> if you got a score to settle, get an avenger. If your batteries are low, get a charger. And if you're in a bad marriage, for goodness sakes, get an escape. <laughs> that brings us to men and women. I think that's why they were kind enough to invite us here. I'm glad so. I've met men and women is the biggest mystery in life we will never understand. I'm glad so many women are here. I'd like to speak first to the women. Now, I can only speak as a man. 
It is the handicap I was born with. I only know two things about men and women that are always true. My whole stupid life, only two things. It comes down to two things. Number one, I'm a man. Number two, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if anybody honestly today still thinks it's a man's world, you owe it to yourself to have a wedding. <laughs> On the wedding day, my young unmarried male friends, that's the day you will find out what a very tiny piece of that day's puzzle you are. A lot of young grooms make a mistake. They go into the wedding, they're thinking, wow, son of a gun, beautiful hall, beautiful church. I'm half of the happy couple. Surely this day must be a little bit about me. No, not your day. Not her day, not your day. All her day, not a... She doesn't even really want you there. <laughs> She'd get married without you if she could. She may love you and want to be your wife, but if she could have that beautiful day and just leave you at home on the Lazy Boy, she'd do it every time. Because you're a man, that means in our bride's eyes, we're an accident waiting to happen. You're not going to get to make any big decisions about the day, colors, fabrics, flowers. She'd like to let you, but you're too stupid. And I have no problem with that. The average woman has a better sense of the artistic, don't you think, than the average man? I got married, I found out my beautiful wife, Sarah, wanted us to have checks for the checkbook that were, get this, pretty. I'm a man, I just wanted checks that would clear. <laughs> Sarah told me we're gonna divide the checkbook. I got the deposit slips. Yeah. Wedding day, fellas, her day. I'm not saying it's a lost cause when it comes to the marriage, but the wedding day, bride's day, understand it, know it going in, and it will go better for you. Everything's about the bride as it always has been. Her dress costs hundreds, maybe thousands. There's five separate fittings after the ceremony. Her dress is carefully, lovingly cleaned, pressed, folded, sealed, wrapped in plastic, saved and preserved as an altar and shrine <laughs> for life. The groom's clothing is rented. <laughs> <sighs> and has to be back to the shop on Monday because another guy needs it next weekend. <laughs> Don't let it bother you, young men, that 500 other guys got married in your suit. <laughs> You're still special. <laughs> 50 years from now, she can hold up that gown with a tear in her eye and say, I got married in that. If the groom can do that, he'll be holding underwear. <laughs> So my advice to make it special, you take that underwear home, you stick it on the wall with a nail, 30 years later, you give it to your son to get married in. <laughs> Point to it every now and then and say, someday you're gonna fill those out and make me proud, boy. <laughs> the ring, the woman's ring is incredible, thousands of dollars. This is a man's ring. 82.50. Most stores throw this in when you buy hers. Because diamonds are a girl's. Man's best friend's a dog. Who thought that up? Women thought that up. Because they're smarter than us, they beat us on that one. Woman's best friend's one of the rarest things on the planet. Man's best friend is so plentiful, we neuter him because we don't want more. <laughs> if you want to be a good husband, fellas, and I know you do, there's seven things you need to learn to say to a good woman if you want to keep her for a good long time. They're not easy, but they're important. Ladies, if there's any truth, support me so they learn, okay? Are you ready, guys? This is tough. Number one, honey. Okay, you were right, I was wrong. <laughs> Number two, I'm sorry, and that won't happen again. <laughs> Number three, how could I have been so stupid? <laughs> I don't deserve you, sweetheart. <laughs> I would marry you all over again. No, you're much prettier than she is. <laughs> and no, if anything, that dress makes your hips look too small. You should eat something, honey. You're about to blow away, I swear. I don't know. 
All studies say men and women equally intelligent, but I believe women have figured out how to use more of their brains. I don't know how you do it, but you do. I know my wife makes more decisions before 7 in the morning than I have to make all day. <laughs> I found this out the first time I went shopping for women's shoes with my new wife, and that's when I found out that women don't just have shoes. Men just have shoes. If it goes at the end of my leg, it's called a shoe. <laughs> that's the only name for it. Women don't have a single pair of shoes. They have subcategories for every change in footwear. Women have pumps and clogs and flats and slings and heels and open-toed and mules and spikes and flip-flops and strappy sandals and scrunchy boots and stilettos and wedges and T-straps and don't forget espadrilles. <laughs> Men have no idea what these are. It's a code they use to keep us out of the conversation. A man doesn't know a pump from a flat. All a man knows is when you got a flat, you need a pump. <laughs> and the colors women know. How do you learn them all? But you do. You know every color ever invented. My wife's shoe catalog, unbelievable. I bet every woman here knows what color periwinkle is, right? What color is it? Blue, purple. Yeah, look at the men. How'd they know that? How'd they know that? Because men only know the eight colors from the big fat crayon box from first grade. That's all we know. We've lost six of those. We're down to black and brown, we understand. But my wife's catalog, unbelievable. I never saw a variety like this. Unbelievable. I saw exotic colors like aspen, mauve, ecru, taupe, sea breeze, eggshell, crimson, indigo, khaki, beige, honeysuckle, ivory, lavender, sandstone, heather, mist, teal, satin, flax, coral, cream, nugget, pearl, saddle, daisy, black, ebony, charcoal, raven, midnight, parsley, persimmon, pineapple, periwinkle, papaya, peach, purple, pink, poppy, pixie, powder, pewter, peapot, dancy, pumpkin, pewts, pomegranate, peppermint, pancake, pumpernickel, champagne, and toast. On the other hand, men's shoes, black and brown. Sadly for men, one choice, too many. Because we still got to turn to the wife and go, honey, which one should I wear here tonight? Help me out. I got black and brown. I can't make a call. God bless you, folks. You are wonderful. Thank you so much for the laughs. You are just great. Thanks a million.